Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and I'm the Research Communications Manager um, at Blood Cancer UK. Uh, and I'm joined today by Dr. Helen Parry, who is a Senior Research Fellow at the University uh, of Birmingham and a honorary consultant as well. And Helen is carrying out some research looking at vaccine effectiveness in CLL um, and she's come to talk to us a little bit more about it. Um, so Helen, over to you, will you tell us a little bit more about your research please? Yeah, I'd be delighted to. Thanks, Rachel. Um, so many people probably who are listening to this probably are aware of our study because we've actually recruited UK wide participants to the CLL vaccine response um, study. So we've we've named it the CLL VR study now. Um, and the idea is that we wanted to try and capture um, a broad look at across the UK, how immune responses to the vaccination schedules um, reflected really amongst patients with CLL compared to um, patient, uh, people without CLL. And the reason we wanted to do that really is because obviously in the UK, we've had different vaccines. So we've had the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine, and we've also had the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. And we've had slightly different scheduling as well, perhaps to other parts around the world where we've extended the interval from three weeks to up to 12 weeks. So we've recruited a large number of patients, so around 500 um, patients have taken part in this study and we're really grateful. So thank you very much for everyone who has helped us. Um, and we've asked patients to either um, send in a blood spot test to us, um, which we can get antibody data from. Or if you are local to us in Birmingham, we've actually gone out and got a blood sample. Um, and from that, we can tell a little bit more. So we can tell antibody responses and also cellular T cell responses, which is like the other arm to your immune system. And so far we've released the results on the first 299 participants that took part. Um, and that really uh, reflected 267 results that were following one vaccine and 55 uh, participants who had actually had both vaccines at that time point. Um, and what we actually found was in following the first vaccine, it's around 34% of participants had a response, um, but that compared to around 94% in healthy donors. So the response rate was um, quite markedly reduced in, in participants that had CLL. And then following the second vaccine, encouragingly, that response rate increased. And we saw that hovered around 75%, um, but that compared to 100% that we saw in, in healthy donor controls. So aside from the proportion, the other thing we've been looking for with those results is looking at the actual magnitude of the, of the antibody response. And there we found that that was also lower in, in participants who had CLL compared to our control, um, control donors. So the other thing we were really trying to tease apart, and I think more of this will come in the next paper when we have a really um, comprehensive look at the whole 500 in the cohort, is what the differences are in terms of like the schedule, the vaccine type, and also what treatment stage patients are at. Um, but already we're sort of starting to get a signal, and I think other papers that have come out looking at this disease as well are corroborating these results to suggest that perhaps um, patients that are on active therapy or um, particularly like the brutin tyrosine kinase inhibitors, their response rate seems to be slightly lower. But again, this is only looking at antibody responses so far. So the cellular data and looking at the T cell responses may tell a different story. And that's what we're working on currently in the lab at the moment to try and get the whole picture as it were. Yeah, um, I, think, I, I think it'll be really interesting and we have that that kind of data on the full 500 who have had both both doses um yeah. when when can we expect to see that when can we expect to see more so the antibody um data which um will be available for the whole 500 cohort because obviously we can get that from that dry blood spot test that i mentioned we're hoping to get that out within the next month um so yeah that that data should come shortly um and we're actively at the moment doing all the uh, cellular work in the lab and probably that will be just slightly behind i think okay yeah it'll be very interesting to see definitely um and of course we will share that um with everyone watching when it comes out yeah, absolutely. And we'll, we'll obviously, as soon as we have anything in preprint available, pass that on as well. Thank you. I think it's really difficult for patients at the moment, isn't it, to be in a position where the vaccines, they don't know how effective the vaccines are for them when the whole world is opening up and, and the, the rates of infection are going up. It's a really, really difficult and anxiety inducing place to be for lots of people. So what advice would you give to anybody with CLL watching this? It is incredibly difficult at the moment, and I can completely empathise with how anxious patients are about it. Um, so I think 
The only way really of managing this sensibly is actually to do an individual risk assessment. Um, and I think it's really important that um, patients really think about what they're going to do and their behaviours, um, because obviously we've not got much control now in terms of every you know everyone's out of lockdown so being sensible and things like you know wearing a mask make, making sure you keep that social distance where you can really encourage household members and friends to get vaccinated who you're going to be socializing with because they're really you know hopefully a very good way of protecting yourself um, and obviously in, in sort of things like where you might take a mask off if you're going out for dinner perhaps again you know think about your spacing at, at the table and and in comparison to say going for a walk in a field with your friends who have been double vaccinated that you've got to just sort of think about the kind of risk risk benefit i would i would say in that situation um and then the other thing i'm really trying to emphasize to patients is they think that they're going to get um you know if they've been exposed or they're developing symptoms is really to let us know because i think the earlier that we know the better i think that's really really helpful advice um thank you for that uh, and thank you for joining us. And as I say, as soon as we know more, as, long, as soon as we have more results from um, Helen's research, we will definitely share them with all of you. Thank you very much, Helen. Hey, thank you. Thank you for inviting me.